Folks, another case that we are tracking uh, for trial is in um, Virginia. And, and these cases are the toughest. These are the toughest, but they're important cases because of who the victims are. The, the, the victims, I'm talking about little babies. Little babies. This one's little baby Noah. Baby Noah goes missing, um, and then a community is absolutely devastated uh, when baby Noah uh, is discovered to be murdered. And now mom is the one facing charges. It's a heartbreaking case. But these are important cases because in a lot, a lot of these cases, the child has no one there. There's, there's no one shows up in the courtroom for the child. And if, if mom is the one that's on, on trial, mom's not there supporting the child. She's in the defendant's uh, seat. So these are really, really difficult. Julie Grant has more. Noah, everyone loved you. Baby Noah Tomlin's sudden disappearance rocked to the community of Hampton, Virginia. They've checked under houses. They've checked in sheds. They've checked cars. I'm hoping they checked trash cans. I'm hoping that's why it hasn't been picked up. They've had drones out here. They've had dogs out here. The two-year-old was living in the Bayside Mobile Home Village with his mother, Julia Tomlin, and two other siblings. The morning of June 24, 2019, Tomlin reports baby Noah missing, and a massive search ensues. We put so many different sets of eyes on the um, immediate search area. Law enforcement and community members teaming up, searching for baby Noah. So any scrap of clothing, um, any diapers, any evidence that may lead us in a, a particular direction, we're gonna, we want to take that into consideration. At the Hampton Landfill, city crews sift through two million pounds of garbage, hoping baby Noah could still be alive. We feel very confident that we have exhausted all reasonable efforts and all reasonable resources um, in our search area. Then on day 10, a grisly discovery. Baby Noah is found dead at the Hampton Steam Plant, the place where city waste goes to burn. His autopsy results revealing his skull was fractured in two places. The cause of death, blunt force trauma to the head with signs of battered child syndrome. The manner of death, homicide. Everyone will always love you. And Jesus will take care of you. Julia Tomlin told investigators her baby hit his head while in the bathtub unattended and drowned. But investigators found her story to be inconsistent with the horrific evidence in the case. Tomlin is charged with murder, unlawful disposal of a dead body, and child neglect. The 35-year-old undergoing a mental competency evaluation to determine if she's fit to stand trial. These cases are so difficult, but, but again, I can't stress to you more. These are, are, are important cases as well. Let's bring in Julie Grant. Julie, these are, are, are tough because in so many of the cases, you know, there's, there's people there for the victim. But so many times when it's, when it's a child who relies upon mom and or dad for everything and they're the ones accused, there's no one there for that baby. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Vinny. That's one of the reasons uh, these cases are just so heartbreaking. And when they're in, like in this case, for instance, there was one parent, only one parent who was currently caring for baby Noah makes it even more sad uh, because the alleged behavior is atrocious, truly atrocious. And um, that was one thing I wanted to make mention of as we discuss this case tonight and preview it for our viewers is that baby Noah's father uh, really wasn't in his life. He had his own set of problems. He was in and out of jail, has his own criminal history. And Julia Tomlin was the parent taking care of baby Noah at the time. He was in her custody, according to investigators, one of the big reasons why they looked to her. And um, if there is a, a bright spot in this, Justin Jones, who is the baby's father, uh, his parents are the ones who are taking care of three other children that he fathered with Julia Tomlin. And it's my understanding they are wonderful people who are caring for those three kiddos uh, who do not have uh, their parents in their lives right now for one reason or another, Vinny. And that's good news. I was going to ask you about the siblings. Mm -hmm. So this trial yes. was set for early March, right? What, 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 what's Correct. going on now? You're correct. So it was set for early March. And then when the attorneys got together, it's my understanding the defense team requested that Julia Tomlin have a mental competency evaluation to see if she is fit to stand trial. And they also want to have a hearing after the evaluation and present that evidence before the court. So currently, the next date set is May the 20th to have that 
competency hearing and go over the results of that evaluation and have the arguments made, the questioning done. And as you know, Vinny, competency is a very low standard, right? So it's very, very low um, in the court of law, but we shall see what happens. And, and to be clear here, COVID-19 was not a factor initially in the postponement. It had happened before the pandemic really hit the United States. But now, who knows if there might be further delays because of what we're seeing everywhere else in the country. Absolutely. And it's important, again, when you talk about competency, different than legal insanity, competency is just that test that has to be passed so she can actually be tried. And it'll be up to right. her and her defense team is to see if they're going to allege legal insanity at the time of the killing. So it's two different things. One is her state of mind now, legal insanity, state of mind at the time that the baby was killed. Um, right. How about Julia Tomlin? Has she had some run-ins with the law before? Oh, she has. Yes, my friend. This is not her first rodeo. And as a matter of fact, it was another child abuse case. In 2010, she was convicted of felony child abuse with one of her daughters. Uh, the daughter was burned on a stove in the home. And Julia Tomlin's story was something like she put the child up on the stove around feeding time, didn't realize it was still on. And uh, police did not buy that story. And she's got a conviction for that. And I know you know this type of evidence well as a prosecutor when you have one of those crimes in the past that is similar to one now, there will definitely be some evidentiary arguments as to whether or not that evidence could come in at this trial. Arguably, it's propensity evidence that could stay out, but maybe not. Maybe prosecutors could say there, there was an M.O. here. Uh, who knows, Vinny? All right, Julie Grant, thanks so much. We'll continue to Vinny, track this you. one as it, it gets ready for trial.